Okay, so now we've discussed a bit about eigenvalues. So now let's uh, switch to our uh, focus to discussing about eigenvectors. Okay, so basically, um, uh, we start with a small definition of something called eigenspace. So let A and C to the N cross N Then for a for a given lambda, the set of all X vectors x such that ax equal to lambda x is called the eigenspace. Which I'll abbreviate immediately as E space. of A corresponding to lambda. And we'll denote it as E space of lambda. So for example, if I take the two cross two identity matrix, it has only one eigenvalue lambda equal to one. And the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equal to one is the entire R2 plane. And the other thing is that every X, X in the eigenspace of a particular eigenvalue lambda, eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda. And uh, it's basically obtained by finding the set of all solutions to. So basically E space of lambda. Is the set of all solutions. To. A minus lambda I times X equals zero and is equal to the null space of A minus lambda I. Okay, so in fact, if lambda is not an eigenvalue of A, then what can I say about the null space of A minus lambda I? So could you repeat the question? Suppose lambda is not an eigenvalue of A. So we started out by saying lambda is one of the eigenvalues of A. Lambda belongs to sigma of A. But suppose lambda is not an eigenvalue of A. What can I say about the null space of A minus lambda I? Zero vector. It only contains the zero vector because A minus lambda I is a non-singular matrix that is the determinant is not equal to zero if lambda is not an eigenvalue of A because by definition, all the lambdas for which determinant of A minus lambda I are eigenvalues of this matrix A. So all other lambdas are not eigenvalues of A. So for any, any lambda that is not an eigenvalue of this matrix A, A minus lambda I is a non-singular matrix and therefore its null space contains only the zero vector. OK, so but if lambda is indeed an eigenvalue of A, then A minus lambda I is non-singular. Sorry, A minus lambda I is singular. And therefore, the null space will contain at least a one dimensional subspace. OK, so definition, one more definition. The dimension of eigenspace of lambda 
is called the geometric multiplicity. of lambda. So geometrically speaking, what it's saying is that corresponding to the um, uh, eigenvalue lambda, how many linearly independent eigenvectors can I find? And that is called the geometric multiplicity of lambda. And of course, uh, we also know that, um, you know, lambda is a zero of the characteristic polynomial of A. And so the multiplicity of lambda as a zero of p a of t this quantity is called the algebraic multiplicity of lambda So this geometric multiplicity is basically the maximum number of linearly independent eigenvectors associated with an eigenvalue with, uh, with lambda. So one fact which is not difficult to show is that the geometric multiplicity of lambda is always less than or equal to the algebraic multiplicity of lambda. Okay. So, for example, if I take the two and the geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue one is also two. So they're equal in that case. And the <clears throat> dimension of the eigenspace of this eigenvalue one is going to be two. The entire two dimensional space is spanned by the set of all linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalue lambda. Okay, so um, uh, if, uh, if the matrix A has some eigenvalue lambda uh, for which the geometric multiplicity of lambda is strictly less than the algebraic multiplicity of lambda, then we say that A is uh, defective matrix. Okay, otherwise, of lambda equals the algebraic. of lambda for all of A, we say A is non-defective. Okay, now what this means operationally is that um, uh, if, uh, if A is non-defective, it means that the geometric multiplicity is the same as the algebraic multiplicity. And we know that if we add up the algebraic multiplicity of all the eigenvalues of an n cross n matrix, we will always get n because an, an nth order polynomial always have n, has n zeros. And so if the geometric multiplicity equals the algebraic multiplicity for every eigenvalue of A, then it means that the sum of the dimensions of the eigenspaces uh, corresponding to every eigenvalue is equal to N, which means that the matrix A has N linearly independent 
eigenvectors and therefore it is diagonalizable. So we have that A is diagonalizable if and only if it is non-defective. Okay, so we've defined eigenvectors and seen a property of it. Here is um, one more definition of a left eigenvector. Here is a left eigenvector of A. <coughs> corresponding to lambda, which is in the spectrum of A, if Y Hermitian A equals lambda Y Hermitian. Okay, this definition allows us to state one result, which is known as the principal of bi-orthogonality. So it says that if A in C to the N cross N and lambda and nu belong to sigma of A. They're both eigenvalues of A and lambda is different from mu. Then any left eigenvector of A corresponding to mu is orthogonal. to any, so the normal eigenvectors we defined so far are also called right eigenvectors because the multiplication by the eigenvector is from the right of the matrix. Corresponding to lambda. What does this mean? It, it just means that if I take, so, um, if I, yeah, so if I take the inner product between an eigen, a left eigenvector of A corresponding to mu and the right eigenvector and a right eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda, I will get zero. So basically, if I have uh, distinct eigenvalues of a matrix and uh, two distinct eigenvalues of a matrix, and if I take the eigenvectors, the right eigenvectors corresponding to these two distinct eigenvalues, we know that they will be linearly independent, but they need not be orthogonal to each other. On the other hand, if I take a left eigenvector corresponding to one of the eigenvalues and a right eigenvector corresponding to the other eigenvalue, those two vectors will be orthogonal to each other. Okay. So this we show like this. this is a very simple proof. So let y in c to the n be a left eigenvector. of A corresponding to mu and let X in C to the N be a right eigen 
second vector of A corresponding to lambda. Then if I consider Y Hermitian AX, AX is the same as lambda X because X is an eigen is a right eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda. So it's the same as Y Hermitian times lambda X, which is equal to lambda is just a scalar, so I can pull that out. Lambda Y Hermitian X. And I can also use the fact that Y is a left eigenvector of A corresponding to eigenvalue mu. So I can write this as mu y Hermitian times x, which is equal to mu times y Hermitian x. So I've written y Hermitian ax in two different ways as lambda y Hermitian x and mu y Hermitian x, but lambda is not equal to mu. So the only way these two can be equal is if y Hermitian x equals zero. So that means that X and Y are orthogonal to each other. Another thing is uh, to relate eigenvectors of similar matrices. We know that similar matrices have the same eigenvalues, but how are the eigenvectors of similar matrices related to each other? So that's the following result. Let a and B be matrices in C to the N cross N. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, corresponding to eigenvalue, eigenvalue, do we have a right eigenvector as well? I mean, all these properties, do they hold for right eigenvectors also? Sorry, left. So you're asking basically if um, uh, uh, so actually, if you go back to the original definition, right? And um, okay, so this is actually a good question. Let me let me maybe answer this a little carefully. See, if we if you recall, we started with the equation a x equals lambda x, and we said that this implies a minus lambda i times x equals 0, which implies that um, lambda is an eigenvalue of A if and only if determinant of A minus lambda i equals 0. Correct. And here x is a non-zero vector, which means that this matrix must become singular. So lambdas are the, uh, for any eigenvalue of the matrix A, a minus lambda i is going to become a singular matrix. I could have done the exact same thing by starting by starting with y Hermitian A is equal to mu y Hermitian, which means that y Hermitian times A minus mu i equals zero, which means that this and and so and y is not equal to zero, which means that this matrix. <coughs> has linearly dependent rows or in other words it is also again non uh, it's also a singular matrix so which means that mu is an eigenvalue of a if and only if determinant of a minus mu i equals 0 so basically corresponding to any eigenvalue you will always have at least one non zero left eigenvector and one non-zero right eigenvector. What the result above is showing is that these two eigenvectors, if they correspond to distinct eigenvalues, they will be orthogonal to each other. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. But yeah. those vectors will not be related. Um, I mean, they could be any. Correct. Even row space and column space. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they are related in the sense that they are 
for distinct eigen values they are perpendicular to each other but yeah, for but the for same C lambda if i look at the uh, left eigen vector and the right eigen vector they need not be related to each other so in particular if ax equals lambda x okay and if i take the hermitian of this then what i get is uh, x hermitian a hermitian equals lambda complex conjugate times x hermitian in other words mm -hmm. x hermitian is a left eigen vector of a hermitian okay corresponding to eigen value lambda star so they're not the left and right eigen vectors are not directly related to each other they are related through hermitian or transpose um, cross relation between them right eigen vectors of you a will be left eigen yeah you can't write a direct relation between them so if i take ax equals lambda x and if i take the transpose i'll get x transpose a transpose equals lambda x transpose which means that x transpose is a left eigen vector of a transpose corresponding to lambda it's not yeah. a left eigen vector of a corresponding to lambda yeah it i mean related through transpose means uh, f x is right vector of a that means x transpose will be left eigen vector of a transpose and vice versa correct but if i take a matrix a and i take a particular eigen value lambda i know that this a will have at least one left eigen vector call it y so there will be a y such that y y y hermitian a equals lambda y hermitian and there will be an x such that ax equals lambda x that x and y are not really related to each other yes sir i got it. okay so now here's the relationship between eigen vectors of similar matrices so basically if x is an eigen vector corresponding to lambda it's an eigen uh, lambda is an eigen value of the matrix b and if b is similar to a through the similarity matrix s then sx is an eigen vector of a corresponding to the eigen value um, so basically this allows you to compute the eigen vectors of similar matrices very easily so if you take um, Uh, if you if you know the eigen vectors of a particular matrix and you know another matrix is similar to that matrix then by just multiplying the eigen vectors of the first matrix by s you can get hold of all the eigen vectors of the other matrix so proof is practically one line so b is s inverse as and bx equals lambda x this means that i just substitute so s inverse a s x equals lambda x and now i just left multiply by s which implies a times s x is equal to now when i multiply by s i get s lambda x but la lambda is just a scalar so i can take that scalar out and write this as s x 
And since X is not equal to zero and S is non-singular, implies Sx is not equal to zero. And so Sx is an eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda. Okay. So um, I, I have a few more remarks I can make. Um, so for example, the eigenval uh, eigenvalues of a real symmetric matrix or a complex Hermitian matrix are real. Okay, so if you take a complex Hermitian matrix or a real symmetric matrix, it will always have real valued eigenvalues. So if I take, um, suppose I take A in C to the N cross N and it is Hermitian, then A Hermitian equals A. And so <coughs> if I consider A X equals Lambda X, then if I pre-multiply by X Hermitian, A X is the same as Lambda times X Hermitian X. X Hermitian X is already real and um, uh, positive because X is a non-zero vector. Now, um, if I take the Hermitian of this, which is actually the same as taking its complex conjugate, X Hermitian A X whole Hermitian is equal to, if I take the Hermitian inside, it becomes X Hermitian A Hermitian X, but A Hermitian equals A, so this is the same as X Hermitian A X. But if I do the same on the right hand side, I get Lambda star times X Hermitian X. So from this you can already see that lambda star and lambda are equal because this Hermitian is um, the same as this x Hermitian ax. So these two must be equal. So and this is a real and positive quantity, so they must be equal. So um, Yeah, uh, another way to say it is that if I take, if I look at this and this, I'm taking a number and taking its complex conjugate, I'm getting back the same number. So that means that X Hermitian AX is real value. And X Hermitian X is also real value and positive. So that means that X Hermitian AX divided by, so I'm just taking this down there, X Hermitian X is equal to lambda is real value. If I take the ratio of two real valued quantities, I cannot suddenly get a complex valued quantity. So another property is that let be an operator norm or an induced norm on C to the N cross N and let lambda be any eigenvalue of 
a in c to the n cross n. Then mod lambda is less than or equal to the norm of a. Okay, we've seen this before already that uh, the spectral radius is a lower bound on any matrix norm you can define on A, and this is basically restating something we've already seen before. So, um, but looking at what we have done here, uh, it's a small exercise to write uh, a small proof out for this. So, uh, I mean, the, it's, it's, it's as simple as if AV equals lambda V, then it means that norm of AV is equal to mod lambda times norm of V. And this norm is the, the norm that induced the matrix norm. Okay, then, um, so that means that uh, 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 if I take AV over norm V, this is equal to mod lambda, and this is true for this particular V. Which is the eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda. And by definition, the matrix norm of A is the maximum of a quantity like this over all V not equal to zero. And therefore, uh, um, by definition of the matrix norm mod lambda is less than or equal to norm v. Okay, so basically any operator norm gives an upper bound on the magnitude of the eigenvalues of the matrix A. So I think that's all we have time for today. Um,